that point. Uh, today, we are going to play just the same as last week. We're going to be playing some more five-minute chess. Uh, I'm going to try... Try not to lose, but it's very hard. Coated in dust. Um, because the opponents in ICC, honestly, they're, they're pretty strong. <laughs> uh, so it's hard to just beat everybody all the time. Uh, in the five-minute pool, we have Grandmasters, IMs, uh, and even non-titled players who play, you know, play pretty well. But we're gonna we're gonna start. We're gonna win the first game at least. Let's do this right now. Boom! Waiting to play. Last week we won game one. And it was a pretty nice game. I'm in the five-minute pool. I should start with a one-minute game, right? Hello, Christopher Cunningham. Thanks for joining the stream. Hello, Ken Chang. Hello, Internet Chess Club. Hello, everybody. Um, so what's happening here is interesting. It's taking me a little bit uh, for the game to start. Which often means you're going to play somebody much lower rated. Like, because uh, I'm relatively high rated, so it, there's not that many people around my rating sometimes that are available to play. And so the, the algorithm is just searching and searching for somebody me, somebody that I can go up against and is having trouble. And sometimes in that case, a much lower rated player uh, plays against me. And that's maybe fun for them, maybe not. We'll see. Uh, you know what I'm going to do? It's taking too long. I'm going to go ahead and join the three-minute pool also. Where are all the players, man? Why are they all hiding from me? You know, they heard this show was happening, and they decided not to enter the pool because they knew. Oh, here we go. Five-minute game. Good. Uh, I'm going to start with E4. Now, one thing I gotta be careful against when I play this guy, gotta be very careful not to get my queen trapped. Because he's the queen trapper. Uh, he's obviously very good at it. So I'm just gonna hide my queen on d1 the whole game. Okay, this, when they play e5, I play this really annoying uh, positional system. And my plan here is not to go for an attack, because this is the knight orf. Where, and usually in the knight orf, you play pretty aggressively. But my plan is actually to control the d5 square and, and play kind of an, a more positional approach. Uh, you know, he might have blundered already. I think that move loses. <laughs> uh, I think this is just a well-known loss and that bishop d5 wins the exchange. His, if you notice, when I put my bishop here, it's attacking his rook. And if the rook moves forward, my bishop takes it. So I think he just blundered on move 10 or 9. Um, I was kind of hoping for this, but I didn't think it would happen. See, the queen trapper got his rook trapped. He's, uh, oh, crap. I don't think my queen gets trapped because I have knight to d5. Uh, so here's what I'm saying. I'm going to take his rook. My queen doesn't even get close to trapped here, by the way. It's not even not even remotely close. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to think here anyway. So I have two moves. I have knight to d5. Also, queen a7 is perfectly legitimate. I'm just not getting my... I'm going to be up a rook. The game's just over. Uh, I can slide my queen out to b6 in, in all the key positions. Uh, also, I have uh, knight to d5. Coming next move. Make my face bigger. My face wasn't big enough. Uh, he's thinking now, but it's kind of pointless. It would be safe for him to resign, but he doesn't. So I have a few options here. Number one option is knight to d5, which is completely winning. But another safe choice, just queen b6. I think I'll do that. Then he'll go queen... See, if I go queen b6, he's going to go like queen c8 with the idea of bishop d8 trapping my queen. Uh, I don't want to allow that, so I might just go knight to d5 here. And he moves the queen. I can, like, take on e7. I'm just up a, up a rook here. He attacks my queen, I attack his queen. What's up, Bob and Fishy? How you doing? 
I think you just followed me on Twitter. Oh, he resigned. And he said thank you. I'll say thank you back. Uh, I always like to be polite, even if they have an auto response after the game ends. But yeah, I mean, he just fell for a trap. A b5 looks like a normal move. You attack the bishop, it has to go away. Unfortunately, it goes here. Uh, a more standard move for black here, I think, is something like. Well, queen c7 is a move, for example. And then if the bishop moves away, b5, it's fine because if, if bishop to d5, now bishop to. Bishop to b7 happens after, like, maybe knight takes. I, I think bishop e6 is also a move. Uh, black is not worried about these doubled pawns because they control a lot of central squares. So we got off to a good start here. Let's play again. But yeah, I mean, he just fell for a trap in the opening. Uh, the, the new normal system for white is queen e2, rook d1. You know, at some point we go bishop g5, trade the bishop for this knight to, to get rid of a piece that defends the d5 square, and we kind of focus our game around controlling d5. Uh, black has plenty of opportunities for counterplay, though. In the meantime, uh, objectively, this position is considered, you know, slightly better. I mean, it's totally, it's considered fine for black, but maybe minutely better for white. And in the famous game McShane Nakamura from Millionaire, I think this is why, one of the reasons Nakamura gave that he didn't go for a win with something like e5. He just felt like there's not enough winning chances in a position like this uh, against a player like McShane. But anyway, this guy's using steroids, obviously. I'm playing the Sicilian. Or, you know what, first game, e4, e5. Uh, PED is another is a short term for steroids. The guy's from Denmark. By the way, anyone watching know who won the Sweden versus Denmark soccer game today? Uh, what do I do here? Okay, he's playing all of his knights out. I ask because I know somebody from Sweden who's watching the game. Uh, knight to d4, this is, you know, at this point, hey David Souls, what's up? Thanks for joining the stream. At this point in my career, I have this weird situation where, um, what do I hear? I take on it, do I take on f3 and play c6? Hold on a second. I have like some ideas here. I just can't remember what they are. I think I take this. Uh, but basically, I know what move I'm supposed to play. I just don't remember what I'm supposed to do exactly after it. This happens to me a lot. I think the move that I play here is bishop to d6. I'm oh, sorry, bishop to e7. Uh, and it allows the move queen g3 attacking the e5 pawn and the g7 pawn. And then I castle, and I allow him to take on, on e5. And then I forget everything. But I have some ideas that I've uh, cooked up. Maybe I was supposed to go c6 first. I think I was. Like c6 castles, bishop e7, whatever. Maybe I'll go c6 now then. Or maybe I'll just castle. Mm, all right, whatever. I'm just gonna castle like a normal human being. Why am I gonna try and go crazy in the opening? But I remember some line that I figured out. I, I think I was supposed to go c6, not bishop e7, but somehow I did. I did the other way. I'm gonna go c6 now. Keeps the knight out of d5. Threatens b5 or d5 at some point. He's going the other way. So he's kind of indicating that he wants to play a pretty aggressive game. I might go b5 and then just start harassing his his pieces over here and starting to create some kingside attack or queenside attack or whatever. I might go a5. What are you going to do about a5? He's going to have to make some weakness on the uh, on the side of the board where his king is located, which makes me happy. Like if He'll probably go a4, but that's like I'm forcing him to move a pawn around his king. Otherwise, I go a4 and I trap his bishop. If he goes a3, he's making another weakness. I'll play b4. And this also kind of sucks for him. Denmark's going down. I think it's Denmark, right? Yep. Denmark's going down. Nobody knows who won the game. Denmark, Sweden. Denmark. 
Guy's thinking hard. I think he's going to go A4. Everything else looks bad. Yeah, and that's what he does. And now we have to figure out, how do we open up uh, his king side? Do we go B4, or do we take? I think I'm leaning towards taking, because that opens lines. B4 closes lines. Now, I think a lot of people, B4 might seem more natural, but because it like kicks a knight away, but it does close the position. I want to open the position. I want my rook to go on b8. I want to go right at his king, the b2 point. So that's why I'm taking. And now I have a lot of tempting moves. Even d5 looks good, but let's start with a move we know we want to play. We know we want the rook on b8. So let's just do it. At some point we could even sack on b3 in some lines. We could play rook to b4 in some lines. Uh, I think something like d6, bishop e6 makes sense. Try to get rid of pieces that are defending his king. Overall, I like my position quite a lot. d6, by the way, contains a threat of bishop g4. Now this move is interesting. Maybe I should have not... I, maybe I should have went d6 to threaten bishop g4, honestly. This, this should be fine for me. I'm thinking if I take, he's going to go e5, but I actually don't know that I care. Like, take e5, knight e8, it's fine, I think. Um, hmm. I think d6. Oh, then e5 still. Queen c7, then bishop f4. Something about this has become mildly annoying. So I'm low on time. If d5... Rook d1, ugh. Uh, rook b5 attacks his bishop. I'm going to rook b5. Because it also stops e5. But I'm moving a little slow here, which is a, is a bit of a problem. I'm down to two minutes like a jerk. Alright, uh, d6, okay. Because he can't go e5 now. Yeah, he'll probably go rook to, if rook to d1, bishop g4. But I'm going to have to pick up the pace. Uh, oh, he can go e5. Why did I say he can't go e5? Why would I say that when I'm so obviously wrong? Nobody knows. I might just go crazy here. No, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold on to my material and go 98. I think, yeah, I think there's no way he can win a pawn here. I can take with the bishop, and, and the thing is, bishop takes f4 will be able to check. If he goes bishop takes, knight takes rook d1, I have the move queen g5, check. And then I can move my knight away. It's kind of lucky, honestly. But I think I'm okay. Oh, I noticed a problem. <laughs> he doesn't have to go rook d1. Instead, he goes queen f4. And I don't know what the hell I'm going to do. I'm probably just going to lose a piece. Hmm. I hope he misses it. Okay. Looks like he missed it. So queen f6 allows... God. Queen c7 safe. I'm just, I just feel like being safe. I'm just scared. I'm rattled. I've missed some things this game. I really think bishop takes bishop and queen f4 was winning. And we'll look at that after the game. What's up, Paradox? Welcome to the stream. How the hell do I have 1 minute and 29 seconds left? What kind of garbage is this? I'm going to have to use my bullet skills now. Oh, he took with the rook. What a hero. I mean, it's a good idea, actually. Alright, I'll do this, even though it probably doesn't work. Oh! What happened here? Oh, Jesus. Holy crap. Uh, rook b3? No, rook takes... Rook takes rook b3? Okay, maybe. Uh, the problem is queen takes f, f7. It's coming somewhere. After rook takes rook, maybe I can go rook takes b3 and survive. Like a... Like a <laughs> some kind of miracle. Rook takes queen takes queen takes f7. King h8, queen g8, mate. Um, this guy's sharp. I, I, I should be taking him a little more seriously. No, he's not sharp. He could have won the game. All right, let's do this right away. Rook c6. Oh, queen c6. All right. Ah, uh, Lord help me. 
Alright, I'm going to take and go work to B8. Oh, he's checkmate in one. Please don't find it. Please! Take my queen! No. <laughs> Oh my god. I give up. I give up. That was horrible. Just lost so many rating points. Fuck. Such a horrible game. I had such a good position. Um, This position has to be real good for me. D6 makes so much sense. Develop... Putting a piece on a, in a good square... Threatening bishop g4. So let's say he does this or something to stop bishop to g4. Now I do all this crap. I can go bishop e6. I can go rook b8. Everything is just better. Everyone starts talking as soon as I blunder. A lot of commentary in the chat. What's up, Christopher? It's just better because now anytime I take, there's no e5 threat right away. I've made a useful move. His move is much less useful. Rook b8 was a little inaccurate. And then, I think this was a good move. d6, like... I don't know. I don't know. <sighs> d6 was really stupid. Uh, and now I'm pretty sure... See, my plan was... Rook d1, check! And then I can move my knight out of the pin that he had. However... He can attack my knight without allowing check with queen f4, and I couldn't, I couldn't see a defense here. I don't see a defense. Oh, maybe, maybe this move. That's a miracle, though. My idea is if rook takes, rook takes, and if rook takes, well then I don't lose anything, and if queen takes, rook takes, but I must be losing. <clears throat> Uh, maybe that wins. I don't know. Probably this wins. What's up, Jumbo? What the heck, Jumbo? Follow you in the channel? Sitting here taunting me? Join the pool! Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Right after I lose with some stupid game. John Bartholomew and I had a match recently, and he managed to pull out, eke out a victory due to some extremely fortunate incidents. Um, and now he's coming to the to the stream to to taunt me. It's ridiculous. Uh, this was a good move. So basically, he, he played well. Now he, Queen C7 was bad. Obviously, I had to put the, the Queen somewhere else. Queen f6, why didn't I do this? I had a reason. I was just scared. I, I, I didn't want to make it. looked a little risky after bishop f. Okay, it is risky. Because it's checkmate. Um. Queen e7. Looks safe enough. Oh, wait. You can do the same thing. Oh, no. This is, this is safe enough. Whatever. What's up, Frank Johnson? Alright, I'm playing again. Uh, what I obviously, though, in, in the very end of the game, just to show you guys how not to get checkmated in the back rank, let me show you how it's done. Is there nothing I can do? Am I just losing? Oh, I guess I'm just getting mated no matter what. Alright. Sucks to be me. We're in the pool, ready to play somebody. Let's see, is John Bartholomew scared? Is he scared to face me in the pool? We'll find out. Because if he joins, he will, he will face me right now because his rating's real high. My rating's pretty high. They'll pair us together, and we'll see. We'll see what happens. I'm in the pool waiting. No action. No opponents yet. John, all you gotta do is press 5 on your keyboard. He wins the match, then he runs away. What is this? This is like Capablanca Alakine. Alakine, uh, when he beat Capablanca. I'm not playing e5 again for now. Uh, he didn't let him have a rematch for like 10 years. Uh, and I think there's a very good chance that um, Capablanca would have won a rematch. 
What is happening here at night of six? Uh, so we're playing the Accelerated Dragon right now. All of these moves are standard opening theory. I play a weird line now where I go b5. I used to know it pretty well. Now I'm kind of improvising a lot of the time. So what do I do here? I take on a4, I think. I don't know. Actually, b4 is the is the best move. Uh, b4 is fine. Taking on a4, I think, is fine. I can't remember which one I like the best, honestly. I know Carlson did something like b4 against Anand and some kind of draw. But it's, like, really boring. But pawn takes pawn. It's like... All right, I'm going to take. It's just a little more exciting than b4. But I, I think the b4 is leading to some equality. It just leads to a kind of dry position that I don't want right now. Um, now I think e5 is a move for some reason. I'm just going to do it. <laughs> Honestly, I can't recall. Look at this. John Bartholomew says, I got to run to dinner is excuse number one. But I'm sure you'll be begging for a proper rematch soon enough. <sighs> Unbelievable, this guy. One of the biggest villains of the chess community, John Bartholomew. Just sits around all day looking for streams where he can talk trash to people he just beat. You guys have to watch it live to see this chat, but I'm trying to report it to you the best that I can. Um, rook to b8, I guess. Attack the b-pawn. I'll probably go b3. And I guess I'll go a5. I don't know, the position looks kind of like a little annoying to me because uh, my a-pawn's weaker than his pawn, maybe? Than his, like, any weaknesses that he has. What if I go rook c8? He goes bishop to d5, and then I sack on c3. Queen takes bishop to... I'm gonna do that. I don't know if I'll go bishop to d5, but <laughs> if he does, I'm going to sack on c3. And then I'm going to take with the bishop on d5. I think. Ah. Uh, then with the knight. Take on e3 and go queen h4 check? I don't know. I have a lot of possibilities. A lot of possibilities here. Okay. Rook c7 looks pretty normal. Well, now I have... If bishop to d5, I have simple queen c8. So he has to go bishop a6 now. And then I can go d5 and break open the center. What did he do here? Did something wrong. Bishop b7 just didn't make much sense in my opinion. All right, well, I thought queen c8 now, and I'm just, like, winning a pawn. But let, let me just think about it a little harder. All right, I'll do it. I don't even have to sack an exchange anymore, because he, he forced my rook onto a better square. I can't believe I lost the last game. I'm still traumatized. I'll take with the pawn. His, his knight moves, I take on c2. It's just a little unpleasant for him. My pieces are coming to life. His king is not castled. I don't... I don't know exactly... Alright, I'm going to take this. He's probably going to take on d6. I'm probably going to go rook to d8 to get another piece into the action. I don't know, it has to be good for me. I can take on g2 also. What the hell? I didn't even think about that move. Is it bad? Probably. All right, let me think. Queen c7, knight b5. I'm probably gonna take his queen and then go rook to d3. It was an interesting movie just played, honestly. I, I didn't see it. Alright, let me think. Rook to d3. I think I'm going to win some material. Alright, I'm going to do this. 
Uh, the idea is I'm attacking his bishop, and I'm attacking his knight right now. If he attacks my rook with the move king e2. What's up, Hilarious Epicness? I like that handle. It's a cool screen name. I can take his bishop, then take his knight. The other possibility is to try and be greedy with rook takes b3, but that seems weird. I'm going to just take this. Rook c1, don't do it. Okay, he didn't do it. Because I would have had bishop h6. Now we gotta. We probably want to deal with bishop h6. We probably want to play this. My, my bishop's in a bad spot already. Although he has rook a6 there. Hmm. Knight to d7. Rook to b8. d5. I want to play this move for some reason. I want to go knight c5. But he can go rook c1 now. But he can't go rook a6 because knight c5 wins his rook. So I decided rook a6 was scarier than the other one. Um, he stops that. It's starting to get a little annoying. Bishop h6, rook a6. For some reason I'm doing this. Attack the pawn. And my idea is if he ever does go rook a6, I can go, I don't know, knight b6. But I need to get my bishop on g7 into the game. I'm probably going to go d5, bishop f8 type stuff. This guy's too sharp. Mm, knight f8, knight f6, where do I go? I'm going to centralize the knight. I'm a little scared of him doubling rooks, so I want to keep my knight around. Uh... What up, Martin Riggs? Welcome to the stream. Stupid pawn, man. It's going to be fast. Alright, I don't know what to do. If I lose this game, I'm... I'm going to be very angry. That's all I got to say right now. I'm just trying to stop the pawn, or something, which is remarkably a lot harder than I thought it would be. Knight to d6? Is he in some kind of little paralysis here? I don't know. If he moves any rook off of the b... What the hell is this crap? Why can't I capture this? What are you doing, homie? Alright, now I'm technically winning. I'm just down to 53 seconds. He just blundered. I mean, just blundered the pawn. Uh, Alright, let's keep his king out by putting the knight on d6. Controls a lot of key central squares. Controls b7, so I'm going to bring my king up next move. I might even go... Mm, I can go d4, but I, I think I'm not going to. I'm going to keep my pawns centralized and connected and, and defending each other. Alright, I'll just do this. Maybe I should have went h6 first. If he goes g5, I'm going to go h6. Alright. Uh, when he goes h4, I'll take, go bishop e7. I'm probably going to put the bishop back here, because I like it on e7. Controls everything, stops h4. I don't know, I just like this setup. And now I should do something with my knight one day. Okay, I'll bring it to like f6, then to h5, to f4. Uh, notice also I'm getting the edge in the clock, which is useful here. Uh, he's going to lose. He's down on time, and he just hung his rook. He'll resign after that. Oh, I was wrong. Uh, now he resigned. He resigned before I got to take it. I do love your name, Hilarious Epicness. Alright, so let's see what the hell happened this game. So we got this opening. It's it's like a offbeat line in the dragon. Uh, I I, I kind of remember something like this. I remember something like Queen A5. I remember a game like a rapid game between Carlson and Anand, where it went a little something like I don't remember exactly, but at some point Black went E5. Uh, like maybe check and E5, and then after take Bishop takes. And it led to some equality. 
Uh, but the problem is this position is like almost too equal, and my opponent's lower rated than me, so I thought that doing what I did, where I took an A4, it would just kind of make the game a little more open and interesting. I don't know if this move was good or not. It didn't work out very well. But what I was planning to do after this was I was thinking about this move very seriously. And then I was going to take play knight takes. He'll move the queen to defend the bishop. And I wasn't sure, maybe e4. Just try to open some lines really quickly. Uh, if he takes, I can take this, for example. Uh, maybe castle here. But uh, I'm up a pawn at least on the board. He could win it back. Uh, but the other possibility is even just take this and... I don't know about this, actually. I don't think I have quite enough compensation. I was, I was thinking about something like this to keep his king in the middle. It's playable in a, for a blitz game, but I'm a little concerned. Uh, but you know, you have this little computer analysis built into ICC, so I'm curious what it thinks. It thinks the position's slightly, slightly better for for white after I sack the exchange on c3. But very slight. It says 0.15 advantage. Uh, it also thinks this would be fine. Yeah, okay, this looks totally fine. If queen takes rook c2. So yeah, it doesn't make any sense. Alright, I don't know what, what what black or white was supposed to do here. Probably, maybe not bishop c6. I just don't know. Oh, it says b3. Why does it think... A rook a6. Alright, so he should have played this move according to the genius computer. Anyway, I'm the champion, I won. Let's play again. We're playing ready. He's an IM. Let's try and see if we can figure out who he is. I'm going to check his finger notes by pressing FI ready. John Ek Ekavaria. John Ekavaria from Colombia. Alright, so we're playing a tough opponent. What's up, Brand131? Welcome to the stream. Um, we're going to transpose into the Shveshnikov Sicilian. This line is basically about control. Uh, well, basically what happens here is I'm going to give up my bishop for his knight. But at the same time, I'm going to control d5. So, oh wait, I play c4 here. So basically he has two bishops, but I have a square that I'm targeting. I'm just going to go bishop e2, man. I noticed he let me take on b5. I just decided to ignore him. Whether that was good or not, I have no idea. I'm just going to do this. I don't I don't know what's going on. Usually they play b4. He didn't do that. So I'm just kind of... I don't want to spend a lot of time in the opening figuring out why. Um, but I, the problem is he can now get rid of all my bishops. I like my bishops. And he's going to get rid of all of them. It's brutal. Martin Riggs says, your post on Twitter was hilarious. What post? This position is so, so equal all of a sudden. Oh, brutal life. All right, I'm going to go knight c2. It's just like this boring ass position. The thing is, his knight, his knight on d4 is too strong. I can't just let it sit there for the whole, whole game. So now I'm threatening to trade it. But he can go rook c8, attack my queen. It's just very annoying. And he can even control the c1 square with moves like bishop g5. So I need to play something like a4 and just kind of make make it so that the, the open c file doesn't count as much as it usually would. And instead try to make the a file important. Because his bishop controls c1. I can't really deal with it. The C file. People just tuning in. It's International Master Greg Shahadi. I'm playing five minute chess in the five minute pool on ICC. Alrighty then. I can I can take a pawn. So boring. Um. All right. I'm gonna take it. If I take with the queen. He takes, I take, he plays rook b8, and it's just like a drawn position, honestly. I'm not sure what else to do. I don't know what else to do. I 
I think bishop to d3. Alright, this is really boring. Well, let me think. Is there any way I can try to get an advantage? If rook a5, bishop to d8. If bishop c6, he takes my pawn. I go rook a7. The question is who's... You know, my rook's better than his because, uh, well... No, it's probably pretty equal, but let's let's play for an advantage anyway. Only live once. All right, rookie two is annoying, but I'm hoping he's scared of things that he shouldn't be scared of, like rook to d7. Um, was that good or bad? I have a bad feeling about that move. His... Alright, I'm going to take it. Is that bad? I don't know. I'm going to take, when he takes back, I'm going to go bishop to d7. And then bishop to e6. I'm going to try to round up this, this pawn on d6. And, and try to show that it's a weakness. <laughs> oh, thanks, Martin. Happy you liked that tweet. The problem is I already lost a game. So obviously I was wrong. Uh, he's getting low on time. Alright, I'm going to try to pick up the pace a little bit so that not only do I have a positional edge, but also a time edge. I'm going to go rook to d7 now. Oh, he can... You know what? I'm going to wait. I'm going to go g g3, actually. I'm going to wait before I make any threats against that pawn until my position is a little more solid. So like, now what I want to do is next move rook d7, and then when he goes rook d8, I want to take and go rook c1 with immediate threat of infiltration. Whereas earlier I couldn't quite do that because he had a back rank mate threat. He should just go h6 or g6. Uh, probably g6? Okay, that's what he does. So if rook, if rook d7, I think rook d8's like somewhat annoying. I'm actually well. I'm gonna do it anyway. Oh, he can take on f2. All right, but my d6 pawn is strong then. He should go rook to d8, I think. And then I don't know what to do to try to win that position. I'll try to get my rooks in the seventh, but it's gonna be hard. I think I'll go rook f7. And then I'll try to swing my other rook to the seventh rank and put pressure on his uh on his seventh rank. E4. That's interesting. He's so he's not interested in his pawn, which is maybe a good thing for him. Uh rook takes if he goes e3, I go f4. I think that's okay. I could be wrong though, I could be losing. No, I think it's okay. Ah, whatever. I'm just gonna do it. This could be scary. Uh, I, you know, he has a lot of pressure on f2 with both of his rooks. A move like e3 puts even more pressure on that point. I twinged my like neck muscle here earlier, like right, right here when I was working out earlier. It's just like I keep. Doing some kind of self-massage in my neck. He's getting real low on time. Alright, I'm going to go F4. Well, should I calculate it again? Or should I just do it? I think I'm too lazy to calculate. When I say lazy, I mean that um, from a cost-slash-time perspective, I want to just move quickly so he has less time to think. Uh, but my point is if E2... I go rook e1, and that pawn is then on a square where my bishop's uh, defending against it. Any, any movement, if that makes sense. Uh, I'm going to go bishop g2, defend this key square. If he goes bishop d4, I think I'm going to play the really lame move, king h1, or maybe rook e1. Not king h1. I like rook e1. Uh, just putting... 
right, I think rook e6. Oh, then he's going to put his rook in the seventh rank. How annoying is that? It's not the end of the world, but it's kind of annoying. Oh, it's really annoying. Should I go rook e2? Okay. I'm going to escape with my life. He's down to 14 seconds, so he's probably just going to lose. Yo, this hilarious epicness is spamming the hell out of the, the chat right now. You got a good screen name, but that doesn't mean you can spam. They're going to get mad at you. I see, see you're going to get in trouble, man. Uh, okay, now I'm just winning. Mm, I'm going to go h3 to threaten mate on bishop d3. Checkmate. Wow, I didn't even win on time. All right, so what happened that game? Well, let's take a look. This was a really boring position. I didn't think I would be able to win it. Um, but I decided, you know what, his d6 pawn is like mildly weaker than my e4 pawn, so let's give it a shot. This is an interesting move. He's finding a way to develop his rook without moving it. It's always good when you can develop a piece without, without actually moving it. But I also thought that my e4 pawn was my weakest point. Like, okay, rookie, t rookie 2 is annoying because I can't go f3 because of, uh, he's winning my rook. So, I, I wasn't sure what to do. I was probably going to go rook to d7. Now, that looks ugly. Well, no, it's fine. He goes rook here, I take. I can play something like this, but then he takes. Uh, but then I guess my idea would be f3. He moves the rook, and then I win his bishop. It would be complicated, but... Oh, sorry. But instead, I played pawn takes. I decided my bishop here was, like, kind of annoying. Uh, this I just played to be safe. I could also play an immediate rook to d7. I just figured rook to d8, and if he takes... I wanted to get... You know, the thing is, I shouldn't take. I should always just go rook f7. And then try to use my rooks. But then he'll go rook a8. And he'll try to use his rooks. Complicated stuff. But we eventually won, I think, because he was low on time. And, and you know, he, he did this pawn sack, but it didn't turn out that this pawn was so strong. I'm curious what the computer thinks. Yeah, it thinks I'm somewhat better. He, he, it thinks probably it's about even. This pawn is strong, but he was low on time. He couldn't quite figure out how to use it. That's a good idea. That's a good idea, Martin. Anyway, let's play again. We're three and one now, except for that disastrous, disastrous second game. We're doing okay. I need more water, man. I need it. Oh my god, I'm like, oh, I have enough water. I hate when I go to my water filter and there's like almost no water left. I'm like, damn it, why didn't somebody refill this? And I'm like, oh, somebody's me. It's always my fault, basically. Internet Chess Club, I agree, that's a great idea. I'm down. John Bartholomew, man, running off to dinner. Guy can't wait. All of a sudden, dinner's ready at like 6... What time is it? Like 6.20 or something. 6.15 Central Time? Because he lives in Minnesota. He eats dinner at 6, 6 in the evening? Come on. It's too early, man. There's no way dinner was ready. He's scared. He's running away. Um, the game is not beginning. I pressed five, right? Yeah, you know, this is the danger with, uh, when you're... Once you get above, like, 2300, uh, it takes a little longer to get paired in the five-minute pool because there's just not as many people around your rating. I want to see who's playing now. Should I join the three minute pool also? I think I will. Yeah, there's not that many. There's a few IMs playing. Oh, here we go. The Great Fair. I'll play another Sicilian. It worked last time. I'll play this. You know, the problem is I, I studied this line. 
this accelerated, hyper accelerated stuff, it's not very good. If he goes queen takes, uh, it's pretty good for white. What do I do, knight to c6? Yes. Oh, we're going to have a repeat of that previous game. Oh, so earlier in this video, we had the same opening. And we were able to win. I'm sure he'll do something a little different, though. There's two moves here, f3 and h3. He right, played the more more interesting one. I'm going to pre-move, almost pre-move. He's going to go queen to d2. Uh, he went h4. I have to go h5 here, unfortunately. This transposes into some weird line in the dragon. Uh, rook c8, I guess. And they castle, we go knight e5. I hate, I don't, I don't, whoa, what the hell is this? He's gonna take on a7 or something? No. Well, this guy's coming after me, man. Alright, whatever, I'll take it. I think I'll take that too. I have no fear. Maybe I should. Queen a5? Okay. This is a weird line. Oh, here I am. Take this. It's a weird line, obviously. Uh, my king is... His rooks are coming at me, basically. How do I deal with this crap? Is this, like, really bad already? Because he can go rook takes g6, because his uh, bishop won b3. I hate being attacked. It's, like, the most hated thing for me in the world. I might transpose into endgame where I'm I'm down um, a piece, but I have a bunch of pawns. I'm going to try to get that endgame. I'm not sure. Is there any benefit to taking on c3? He takes with the pawn. I go bishop f3. I don't know what to do, guys. I don't know what to do. Bishop e6? No, it looks horrible. Knight f6 just looks queen h2 or something. Looks really bad. Alright, I'm gonna do this because I can't think of anything better. And next move, I can consider if rook h3. I can consider bishop takes c3. The problem is he'll go rook takes g6 check. Then I go knight g7. I'm probably losing. I kind of want to go for the uh, end game with taking on e4. Bishop c3, rook t There's no way that's good. Bishop c3, rook g6, bishop g7, rook f3, d5. Uh, Oh wait, my queen's under attack there. Right, I give up. I'm too scared of being attacked. I have way too much fear in my life. He can maybe... Oh no, if rook h5, I can take the queen. Alright. So we're now down a piece, but we have three pawns. I think I'll go d5 to... block his bishop. We have to figure out a way to use our pawns. Is that actually good? I was hoping it wasn't, but maybe maybe I should have thought a little bit harder. I'm going to take this. I think I'm going to do this. Ah, uh, wait. Yeah, I'm still just down a piece, right? But my pawns are worse than they were before. If pawn takes knight, rook g7, king h8... Looks pretty horrendous. Stupid. Uh, I 
Alright, I'm gonna play this ridiculous looking move. It's probably horrible. You know what I'm gonna do next move, actually? After bishop takes g7, I'm actually gonna go rook g8. I didn't expect to make that move, but I'm going to. I was gonna take on e4, but I think rook g8, I'm gonna get my piece back, and it's gonna be two pieces versus a rook. I'm just gonna do it, man. Let's see what he comes up with. Because his bishop, if it moves to d4, okay, he can do that, and I take on g1 and take on e4. But this is not so easy, because I have a passed h pawn. I don't know, man. I messed something up big time in this game, but I'm just trying to mix it up and make things difficult for him. I have a lot of pawns. Right, he does the bishop to g4. Let's go, baby. If bishop f7, rook f... Alright, I'm going to do this. He has to go bishop c4. And you know what? I'm going to push my h-pawn. It's not easy to stop that h-pawn. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, If h3, he wants to play... No, I can just go h3. h2 is a threat. I mean, he might be in trouble. Well, king e3. Let's see, king e3, rook f3, king e4, rook g3, bishop h2, rook g2. Huh. I'm going to play this to stop bishop e6 for now. King e2 is probably a good defensive move, but my pawn on h3 on h, uh, is strong, man. It's a strong pawn. But it's hard to move it forward. I'm really having trouble thinking of a way to advance that pawn. Because I go rook g6, he goes king f1. I can then go rook f6 and go for like a repetition. What a weird move. Alright, um, well, I'm gonna do this. King f1, I assume. I'll repeat once for fun. Uh, and I'm gonna go to g2. Alright, we're threatening to take on, this, on c2. Uh, we're not threatening h2, because king can take our rook. But we're threatening to take on c2 and cause all kinds of havoc. Oh, but he has bishop e6. But then I win a lot of pawns. But he should go bishop e6, I'm pretty sure. I think that's his best chance. Do I have e3 there? Maybe. No. I didn't even see that move. Alright, let's use the king. I don't know what the heck else to do. I get the king to g3, I'm winning. He's down on time, too. He can't figure out what to do. He's freaking out here. Uh... I'm just going to do this. Plan is to go e3. I think I'm going to win. I, I don't... I don't know what he's going to do, man. I don't know what he's going to do. Boom. Bishop e2. Looks rook e2, I meant. Oh, baby. What a game. What a game. What's up, Robert Holzman? I'm going to play one more game. That's for sure. Oh, the guy wants to analyze. He's starting to make analysis moves. Um, We're going to analyze this and then play one more game. And as long as I don't lose that game, that will be my last game. I am unable to stop in a loss. It's a psychological weakness. But, okay, this opening... Let's not focus on the opening so much. I, I, I should have been more careful. Like, this attack is very dangerous. Let's see what the computer says. 
thinks he's basically winning already, so I obviously did something a little wrong. Thinks I should just start taking things. He did not like this queen a force move at all. He's getting rook g1 with tempo, like why do I give him that, you know? And it thinks what I did was correct. See, if I don't do that, well, well, I mean, I can't move my bishop anywhere else. But, like, if I try to move my bishop away, he plays this move. And this bishop becomes, like, really, really strong. And, like, I don't know exactly... I don't know exactly what I'm supposed to do about that. So, I, I should have played, like, either g3 or, or pawn takes pawn to just kind of keep this position closed. But instead, I played queen a5. It was a, it was a mistake. And now I just realized I was desperate. I went for this end game where he has uh, a piece for three pawns. I knew it was bad for me, but I thought like maybe I have a chance. And now is when I started to play well, I think. He took this, and this could be really bad for me. Like if I take here, he can take on g6. And again, this pin, and he's pinning my bishop. So he's going to win pretty easily like with moves like bishop h6 or, or rook to g5. So I took this. And then I think I found the best move, king h7. If I take his knight, he takes with the rook. I think even bishop takes is interesting. King here, bishop takes. I was not happy with this rook and this bishop all around my king. I thought that this move, yeah, at the moment he has three full pieces for two rooks, which is dominating, uh, a dominating advantage. And I originally was going to take this and let him still be up a piece, but... The problem is my pawns are a little more disjointed now, so I, th I thought it should be easier for him to win. But then I realized I can go rook g8, and now I'm attacking two pieces at once. I'm going to get one of them back. He can't move this so easily because I win his rook. So he found the only way to move it to a decent square was bishop to d4. But then I take his rook. Now we get this endgame where, as I mentioned, this pawn is really strong. So rook here, the idea is if he takes the pawn, rook f1... And I'm getting his I'm getting his bishop, man. So he can't do that. He tried to hold on to it, but now I start pushing this pawn. And as you saw, he just had a really hard time dealing with the threat of my rook in this pawn. Uh, two bishops is just much better than a rook. But in an endgame, when past pawns are involved, rooks are very strong. Uh, it's usually the case when you have an endgame like this where it's bishop and knight versus rook. It's rare that it's two bishops and the rook the, the rook is still better. But in this case, I think I was. At least in a practical game. And yeah, it, the computer agrees black is just better here. It says minus 0.5 for black, which is like being up half a pawn. So that's surprising because bishops are strong, man. But it's just not easy. Uh, and, you know, he played king d2. And after I do this, my point is let's say he plays this move. I just go h2 anyway. And when he takes, I check and I win the bishop. All right, folks. One more. Hey, you're Scandinavian? We need to know... Oh, Scandi man. I hear what you're saying. That's John Bartholomew's nickname, the evil Scandinavian player. He plays the Scandinavian open, which is this. It's an evil opening that only bad people play. All right, last game, baby. We're going to beat somebody. It's going to be amazing. Uh, we're 5-1 and one so far, which is pretty good. What's our rating? Did we go over 2,400 yet? 2398, ridiculous. Ciao, Martin. So we're going to end the stream above 2400, so that will be nice. It requires me to win the next game, but trust me, man, it's going to happen. No way I'm ending this on a loss. No way in the world. No draws either. I should have drawn, you know, there's a, I could have drawn that end game. Uh, but fortunately I was able to win somehow. I'm getting hungry too. I'm hungry for dinner, but it's 8 o'clock instead of 6.30. Everyone watching, say hello. Say hello to me while we wait for the next game. Tell me what your favorite chess opening is. Oh, game started. 
somehow my opponent has no time. I don't know what that means. Oh, there's this clock. <laughs> uh, we're playing some dude. I don't know what country he's from. It doesn't have a flag next to his name. That shouldn't be allowed. Uh, so he's playing the French defense, and I've played this stuff like a million times before, so I'm playing my moves pretty quickly. It's called a Tarash variation in the French. Alright, he's playing. Um, this Queen C7 line's a little annoying. I play something that I want to I want to switch to something else. But for now, I'm going to play what I know, which is to go G3 and Bishop F4. We got we got to vote for the Spanish. We got somebody who likes C4. All right, I, I gotta remember what to do here. Do I take and go Knight C3? For some reason, I feel like I do. I think takes a Knight C3. Bob and Fishy says, "Hi, yeah, I'm bad at chess, so I don't have a favorite opening." Oh, come on! You don't have to be like world champion to have a favorite opening. My favorite opening, even though I don't play it that often, is the dragon. Just because I used to play it when I was a kid. A lot of fond memories. Uh, I also like... I don't know, what else do I like to play against? I like the Tarash variation of the French, like we're playing right now. Alright, I'm going to capture this, because I, I don't really know what else I would do here. Probably I'm going to take that. Okay. And probably after I'll go queen. I don't know. Queen to b3? Rookie 1. I'm a little worried about rookie 1 because it, it takes away defense of the f2 point. But maybe I should do it anyway. Just put my rook in an open file. You can always go bishop h3 anyway. I kind of like queen b3, though. Just attack b7. I might not take it, but I make him think about it. And then I plan my other, you know, my other rooks to come into the game. I'm going to go... Well, rook e1 now, queen h5 is annoying. I'm going to play rook on a to e1, because I'm scared of the f2 point. I'm a huge chicken. Oh wow, you don't play at all, you just like watching videos of people who are good at... Okay, so somebody's watching the stream and doesn't even play chess. Uh, I'm getting maybe attacked here. I don't know why I allowed this exactly, but I did. And now I'm very scared. I'm very, very scared of knight to g4. Well, I'm going to just defend it with all my, with all my might. I don't want him to go knight g4, basically. If he does it now, I'll capture it. Alright, now what? My position is kind of annoying. Knight to b5 to go to d4? Sure, why not? Uh, my knight on c3 didn't feel like the best place. So now I have two ideas, knight to d4 or bishop to d3. If he goes rook e8, knight to d6 is winning the exchange. Like if he tries to put this rook over an e8. Oh, Alright, knight to d4 looks safe. I might even take his bishop. Hmm. I'm thinking about bishop f3, actually. Yeah, put some pressure on the d5 point. I really like uh, the, the change that this game has... Uh, the change of character. Like, I'm not getting attacked anymore at all with this queen, and he just has like a, a d5 pawn, and his bishop on c6 is kind of passive. So I'm just generally happy with how things have went. Uh, now I'm going to go queen to, what, a3? Let's attack the a pawn maybe, to see what he does. Okay. Uh, next move, I can go like rook e3 and try to double. I'm going to just do it. He can't take because queen takes f8. I'm hoping he blunders that. Whoops. Whoops. You know, it's always it's often good when you find a good move that's also a trick. Now, I know this is a very basic trick, but in a five-minute game, 
Uh, people can make mistakes. And so, honestly, like, I... I thought it's a decent enough move, but I, you know, I like math, and I know that there's some chance the guy's just going to take my rook off. He's just going to be like, oh, I'll trade, he'll trade back, and then I'll go rookie eight. And I figure, like, the combination of the fact that it's a solid move, and that he might just immediately blunder a game away, made it worth playing. Uh, I can also... Well, you know, I, I, so it's hard for me to figure out how to advance my position anyway. So my idea is just double on the file. The problem is knight g4, maybe. Maybe is not great. But then I can do something along these lines. Pinning his knight. Uh, what else could I try? I could even put the rook here. He still can't take it because of queen f8. And my idea is just put the other rook in the e-file. Uh, and then maybe, you know, go for rookie seven. But definitely, once I saw this trick, now I know it's like really basic. I'm just taking a rook for free, but it's a very easy thing to miss. People miss stuff like this a lot in a blitz game. And, you know, it, it worked out in my favor this time. But yeah, I was really kind of scared when his queen was around my king. But we, we managed to, like, not get checkmated. I was going to just take and then trade things off somehow. I was thinking about... I was going to go queen to d1, because I'm kind of desperate to trade and not get attacked, and, and to also blockade this pawn so this bishop doesn't get strong. So, like, if he moves the queen to this square, I'm putting the queen on d4, I'm going to keep his bishop behind the pawn. Um, but hey, everyone. Thanks for tuning in and watching. We had a good night today. Uh, we went 6-1. and one, Moved our rating up to 2400+, plus, which is good. Uh, we didn't get paired up in any of the games, but we played plenty of solid players. Let me see, one... Wait, I was only 5-1? and one? I thought I was 6-1, and one, but I guess I'm wrong, because it says I've only played 6 games. Uh, I guess I, you know, one of my games must have made me so happy I counted it twice. 5-1 and one is solid. It should have been 6-0. and oh. There's no way we should have lost to that guy in the second game. So brutal. But anyway, thanks for watching. We got some other favorite openings here. The Black Knights Tango and Levitsky. I don't even know what the Levitsky is. One guy likes the Spanish for both colors. My favorite answer is though, no, I mean, I literally don't play at all. I just like watching videos from people who are good at stuff. I'm a Pokemon guy. I used to play Pokemon on my Game Boy a long time ago. Christopher Horroyd says, very didactic experience. Thanks, Greg. <laughs> um, well... Thank you for watching. It's been a pleasure. I hope to do this some more. And as always, like leave comments as to what type of videos you'd like to see. It won't always be five minute chess. It just I thought it went well last week, so we did it again this week. But we could do three minute. I can even play one minute. Uh, I can see a simo happening one day. See y'all later. Bye bye.